Larry Jennings is the president of the Fellowship of the Inner Life Pastoral Council. And he talks to dead people. And actually, this is among the most comforting thoughts that I can think of in our world today. For so many of us fear death. We fear the unknown. In spite of the many books on different people's near-death experiences, we are unable to empirically prove the existence of life after death because you can't materially prove something that is of a different world than the material universe. And thus, for many, doubt remains about whether or not there is truly an afterlife. Larry knows that there is life after death because of his own experiences. A funeral director by profession, he meets with people and talks with them after they die. Those of us who know Larry and call him friend also know him as a kind, caring, wise, insightful, generous, humble, and supportive man. We are privileged to have him as an active member of our fellowship family and as our speaker today and to hear of his experiences. Let's welcome Larry James. People must know me very well there because I've got some water to pour into a cup and it says Crown Royal on it. <laughs> People who know, who have known me well know I enjoy a sip of scotch. <laughs> I want to start with you today um, by sharing something from a book that Bruce just recently gifted me. It's called Emmanuel's Book. If you haven't seen it or read it, it's absolutely fantastic. It breaks it down into different chapters, and one of them talks about death. And in this, he says, death is like taking off a tight shoe. Even when you are dead, you are still alive. You do not cease to exist at death. That is only illusion. You go through the doorway of death alive, and there is no altering of the consciousness. It is not a strange land you go to, but a land of living reality, where the growth process is a continuation. Good morning, all, again. Thank you for having me as your speaker today. This past week, I've been reflecting on my career as a funeral director, which started in 1976. 41 years ago, I first walked into a funeral home and entered a world that few have seen and experienced. I plan on retiring in about five years, unless I decide to keep going and make the 50 years. We'll have to wait and see. It's been a great career. And I've often wondered how many families I have touched and helped through their loss. Here, as I look around this room today, I see many of you who I have assisted, as you've had family members cross over. Losing someone is never something you can be prepared for. The physical separation we experience is painful for those of us that are left behind. Years ago, when I was an apprentice, I will always remember the words of Father McManus when he told me to never forget what I do as a ministry, a ministry to service to others during the most difficult times. Grief will test your limits and will take you to emotions that you've never felt before. It is during these times our faith and our belief systems are put to the test. It is during these difficult times we can experience growth and we can experience understanding. Life is that way. Difficult ways have a time of creeping, have a way of creeping into our lives. And here on the earth plane, it's during these hardest moments, we have our opportunity to look at ourselves to overcome adversity to rise above as our soul continues to learn in this mystery school that we are all experiencing together. As many of you know, our niece recently died. 
This was a difficult time for our family as she chose to leave this world that had become too hard for her to live in. When I close my eyes and think of her, I still see the little girl carrying the flowers down the aisle at my wedding. She was five years old. When Sharon and I had received the news, the pain and grief overcame both of us as we tried to understand what had happened. Late that night, I lay down on my side, trying to sleep, and I suddenly remembered that I hadn't given thanks for the day. I began this practice many years ago and continue it every night as I go to sleep. I simply close my eyes and say to myself, what am I thankful for today? Normally it's easy as I think of people and events that have touched me throughout the day. I find it peaceful and this time allows me to reflect on all the good things that come to me each and every moment of every day. Tonight was different. As I said to myself, what am I thankful for? My mind was asking me, are you crazy? What could I be possibly thankful for today as we are trying to cope with the news that Sarah had died? As I settled in and pushed my thoughts aside, I found myself peacefully slipping away and began to see things more clearly. I was thankful for her, her life and the time we had spent together. I was thankful for the beautiful woman that she had become. And I was thankful for her becoming a mother and bringing two beautiful daughters into this world. As I found myself slipping away, I watched as she was led into the light by several beings who were comforting her. These beings appeared all in white with flowing gowns. Others walked in front of her and were gesturing to a bright white light at the end of a tunnel. They had no faces, only a dark space where you would expect to see one. And as they all entered the tunnel together, the figure on the left turned to me and spoke to me telepathically. In a feminine voice, she said that Sarah would be fine. She needed rest and healing and that they would care for her. Then this glimpse through the veil disappeared. I lay there in amazement of what I had just seen. I was also grateful for the knowledge and the reminder that life does not end, that no one leaves this world without having left behind a legacy of growth. Today, I want to continue to share with you some experiences that I have had as a funeral director that have shaped my belief systems. And most importantly, how this belief system has shaped the world that I live in, this wonderful universe. Last month I was sharing a Paul Solomon reading on death with Heidi. And I shared with her an experience that I had several years ago. I told this story here years ago, but I believe it's worth revisiting again. This happened to me probably 20 years ago, and it's still as vivid in my mind as the day it happened. I was working at the funeral home and had received a call that John Smith had died at his residence in Chesapeake. At this time in my life, I was becoming more and more immersed into the New Age perspectives on life and death. I was meditating, I was reading all I could find, and I was finding that certain subjects resonated to me. As a funeral director, I was of course drawn towards all I could find from non-death, from Native American customs to paganism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Muslim, and of course Christianity, basically all the world religions and philosophies. There was also an increased awareness of things happening around me. Events that I would eventually understand had always been there. 
I needed only to notice. Myself and another funeral director arrived at the home of Mr. Smith, and as we entered through the front door, we were met by his son and found his dad lying in a hospital bed, placed in front of a large window so he could look outdoors at the beauty of the world that was surrounding him. As I normally do, I spoke to the family and introduced myself and told them there was no hurry that we would take him into our care when they were ready. The other funeral director stood inside the door, allowing me to take the lead. The family chose not to be present while we moved him and just wanted a few minutes alone to say goodbye. And then they would wait into a room, another room until we were finished. They told me Mr. Smith had long battled cancer, that he was 52 years old. First, his wife went to his side and spoke to him gently and softly kissed him on the forehead and left the room. Next, a grandchild said her goodbyes, and then she quietly slipped away. Last, his son knelt by his father and spoke quietly into his ear and said his goodbyes. I heard him say, I love you, Dad, and will miss you. Of course, there were many tears from each of them, but you could also feel that they were relieved that his pain and suffering were over. During the time they spent with him, I was struck by the tenderness and the love. And then suddenly I could feel the goosebumps go up and down my back and an overwhelming feeling of peacefulness came over me, a feeling that's hard to describe. Looking back and knowing what I know today, it was the experience of the opening of the chakras and feeling the love in the room, unconditional love, pure and unabated. As the sun stood up and began to leave, I watched in amazement as his soul left his body, hovered above himself for a moment, and then came towards me. The only way I can describe this soul to you is when he lifted from his body, it looked like shimmering water. His soul retained his shape and then approached me in a standing position with inches separating us. I could see through him. He shimmered and shined and his soul was fluid in its movement. And as this beautiful soul stood before me, I was in total amazement. This was the first time I had seen something like this. Looking back and watching him as it replays in my mind as if it was just a moment ago, it was like looking into a complex and beautiful universe. He stopped in front of me for an instant, and then he went upward into the air, and he disappeared. As I stood there, I can still remember the feeling of peace and experiencing the love that filled that room. I quickly looked behind me to see if my partner had seen what I had witnessed, and John hadn't. He was patiently waiting by the door to take Mr. Smith into our care. The son was also unaware and again told his dad he left, he loved him, and then he left the room to join his family. It was difficult to proceed after this experience, but soon I was able to move forward with our work, took him out to our vehicle, and I went back inside the room to say goodbye to the family. When I went back in, I noticed the room felt different meaning everything was back to normal. Looking back, I know that this was meant for my eyes to witness and experience and no one else's. I have found over the years that when I am focusing on something, for example, studying death and what happens when we cross over, that my spirit guides always seem to guide me into certain places and circumstances so that I may experience what I've been reflecting upon. I'm sure that is what happened in this instance. As I was given a gift so I could better understand 
and use this knowledge and use this ability to help others and myself. Understand that this is not something that happens every day. Thank goodness. My abilities to see through the veil and my ability to gain information usually happens only when I ask for it or when my guides want me to see something so I can learn or as I like to say, so I can remember. This past week I went into work. I arrived at my normal time about 6 a.m. Things were quiet and I was alone, which is normally the case, allowing me to prepare the day and set a schedule for my staff. As I walked through the building, turning on the lights, I paused in the visitation room at the casket of Mrs. Johnson. I opened her casket so she would be ready for viewing. When I was finished and was sure that everything was just right, I looked at the pictures that the family had brought into display. I love when families do this as it gives me an opportunity to know the person. As they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. I noticed a lot of family photos, especially two pictures of her with her grandsons, who she was obviously very, very dear to her. I paused a moment and said a prayer to her and her family and allowed myself to go in and connect to her. Quickly I found myself slipping away and she appeared in my mind's eye where for me there is a knowing when I have connected to a soul. She spoke to me and asked me to tell her family that she was fine and that she was very excited to tell me that when she crossed over that Jesus had met her and welcomed her into heaven. She was so excited that I had thought of her and asked if I could tell her family this news. And I told her I would when the right moment presented itself. I then went about my normal routine that morning and thought about what she told me, that Jesus had met her and welcomed her into heaven. I find it interesting that we have different experiences when we cross over. I have come to understand from what I have seen, what I have been told by people crossing over, and from books that I have read, that each of us has a choice as to what will happen. Mrs. Johnson, a member of the Christian community, chose to see her Savior when she died which allowed her to have a peaceful transition. Others may choose to have the Buddha meet them and lead them into the Bartos. Like everything we do, dying becomes a choice that we create whether we are aware of it or not. Remember our thoughts create and affect every part of our lives, including our transition. Crossing over will be different for each of you. Myself, I picture myself being met by members of my soul family and feeling the unconditional love that can only be my creator. By having these thoughts, I know that I am creating what will happen when it is my time. I know for my niece that crossing over was difficult as she was overcome by what she had done. Yes, she was being helped by her spirit guides, meeting her and taking her into the light for healing and rest. Although I know her, her transition was difficult because she also could understand and feel the pain of others who would have been affected by her decision of ending her own life. I know she's fine and someday I'll see her again and we'll talk about the reasons why she chose to leave this world. I continue to bless her, knowing her life was in God's perfection. And she again will come back to this place and live another life with the challenges which will help her grow further. Let me go back to Mrs. Johnson. 
Later that day, her family came in for the fierce viewing, and I was present and led into the room where she was. I gave them time alone and then joined them to see how they were doing and if they needed anything. It always amazes me that spirit opens a door, allowing me to share with families in a way that they can understand, in a way that they can be comfortable. Her husband and daughter were present with other family members who were having a difficult time. I spoke to them softly, and we talked about the pictures that surrounded them, and we talked about all of those good times that they had spent with her. Knowing their Christian background, I asked them if they'd like me to share a prayer with them. They quickly answered yes, and I gathered them in a circle in front of the casket. I asked them to close their eyes, and then I began. I told them to follow my voice and picture their loved one standing at the gate where there was a brilliant white light and a figure standing before her. As they followed my voice, I explained the figure they saw was that of Jesus, greeting her at the gates of heaven and leading her to a place of love and comfort. We prayed for her and we prayed for her family that they find comfort in the knowledge that she was with her Lord. When I closed my prayer, there was a calmness in the room. Well, before there was only a feeling of despair and uncertainty. They couldn't thank me enough for the prayer. And then Mrs. Johnson came through and thanked me for what I had done. I truly believe that so much happens when we allow spirit to work through us bringing us together at just the right moment in time, allowing each of us to grow. When I have these experiences, the greatest gift is not the ability to do these things, but rather the greatest gift is being able to share and the touching of the lives of those that are involved. And as always, it allows myself to grow. You today are an integral part of this talk I'm giving. You've been led here to leave me, to lead to hear me today, and it is my hope that you leave this place with a greater understanding that will help you navigate through your own life. Learning and accepting that there is an opportunity for your soul to grow each day. Death really is the great illusion that life ends, when the truth is it's only a continuing process as our soul develops. When the Creator made us, I like to envision myself as sparks coming from the light of love, allowing the Creator to experience life through me and each of you. When we come into this realm to incarnate with a purpose, I was told many years ago by Thomas, a minister of our church that crossed over several years ago, that my, my purpose was to experience charity. The choices that I make will be affected by charity, meaning challenges will be presented to me, allowing me to make a choice of whether to experience it or not. Being a minister and being a funeral director gives me many opportunities to practice charity in my life, and that learning process continues every day. I love to hear the stories from the families I serve, in particular from people who have a like-minded vision of the world we live in. Thank you all. <laughs> I don't think the Baptist Church is ready for my talk. Recently, we had a service in our church for a member, and as I sat in the back of the sanctuary, right where David's at on that stool, I watched the person who had died attending their own service. I saw her first near the piano, first only seeing her face in a white haze. It was like she was surrounded by a cloud. 
She sensed me watching, and then she materialized in full, standing in front of the piano and watching as Susan sang a song that she had asked Susan to sing for her. What I will remember most of this experience is her smile, which radiated from her and filled this entire room with her loving presence. She was so grateful for Susan for having shared her voice with her. It was a very powerful moment. After the service, I spoke to a couple of people about what I had witnessed, and two of them had had the same experience. They first saw her as a face with a, with a white cloud around her, which was pretty amazing. The circle we are all part of is powerful. I do not consider myself to have any special gifts. I simply believe and connect to my inner voice, the source of all. Paul Solomon, our founder, tells us that when we have to meditate often, and a whole new world will open to us. When we meditate, we connect to the oneness we are all a part of. And it's through this connection we can have a better understanding of how to open the veil between our worlds. This veil becomes thinner as you allow yourself and give yourself permission to see and feel and experience the love of our Creator. And not only the veil, which Rob Grant called a place called home, but also the veil between us and our spirit guides, our angels, the elemental kingdom, and of course the animal kingdom. We are limitless beings. We will always exist and experience life and growth on our pathway of our choosing. Death is not the mystery that we all think of. We only need to sit quietly and look within ourselves and understand that death is a new beginning. Each of us have had many past lives and we've had the opportunity to explore some of them. Perhaps you visited the Hall of Records or perhaps you've had a reading with someone who could tell you what your past lives were. These past lives make up who we are today. I have explored several of my past lives and, and learned why death has become important to me in this lifetime. My becoming a funeral director was not by chance. There were things in my past that needed to be resolved and allowed me to have a close-up at this illusion. And just as important, it's allowed me to be part of the many families' lives that have suffered a loss again an important part of my past life experiences. Becoming a part of the circle that we call the Fellowship of the Inner Light and being ordained in this church has given me the opportunity to share personal experiences with you. Throughout my career as a funeral director and minister I have learned the true meaning of charity, the true meaning of compassion and love. I can remember many years ago when a young boy died, I knew very well, probably the most difficult experience for me with death. I can close my eyes and see his smile and I can hear that giggle that still warms my heart. After we attended his services in New York and came back to Virginia, our hearts were heavy. When I went to bed that night, and fell asleep, I had a dream. And I saw someone sitting cross-legged on the ground, looking over a beautiful lake surrounded by a forest. This person had his back to me, and I realized it was Caleb. He spoke no words, only smiled at me with a deep knowing. And I knew in that moment that death is not the end, and that our lives never end. Remember to create 
what you want when it's your time. I know that after I am met by my soul family, I'm going back to that lake. And I'm going to sit next to Caleb. And I'm going to see him smile. And I'm hearing him giggle again. Thank you.